are witnessing in the last days. The Great Tribulation is the final refining fire to test the whole world. It's also the church's final test of perseverance and final opportunity to witness. There will come a period of Great Tribulation just before the return of Jesus. The person known as the Antichrist will come to power. You may encounter false teachers who deny this doctrine saying the name the Antichrist is not in the Bible. This is true. The name, or rather description, Antichrist, comes from 1 John 2.18, 2.22, 4.3, and 2 John 1.7. It's used to describe the attributes of anything anti or against Christ. So all demons and many people and systems fit the description of being a lower A, Antichrist. We may use the uppercase A, Antichrist, to refer to this singular individual who is the epitome of all lesser Antichrist archetypes who come before him. He's the worst of them. He's not called the Antichrist. In scripture, he's called the lawless one in 2 Thessalonians 2.8, the man of lawlessness and son of destruction in 2 Thessalonians 2.3, and the one who causes the abomination of desolation in Matthew 24.15, the beast that comes up from the abyss in Revelation 11.7 the horn or the king with eyes like a man and a mouth uttering great boasts in Daniel 7, 8, the king who exalts himself and speaks blasphemies against God in Daniel eleven thirty six, and multiple descriptions in Daniel's prophetic vision in Daniel 8, verses 23 to 25. He's the beast who assembles the kings of the earth and their armies against the one seated on the horse, who is Jesus, and against his army in the final battle. See Revelation 19.19. He's given all power and authority from the dragon, who is Satan. See Revelation 13.2 and Revelation 12.9. He'll be accompanied by a second beast, another man, called the false prophet. He'll look like a lamb, meaning he'll be a religious figure resembling Jesus, but will speak like a dragon, Satan, with blasphemous lies. He'll also perform miraculous signs that successfully deceive people and cause them to worship the first beast. See Revelation 13, verses 11 through 15. I also examined some of these topics and verses in chapter 1, section P, chapter 3, sections F and H, chapter 5, section J, and chapter 6, section N. There always has and always will be great and diverse speculation about when and how these events will occur. My opinion is that a third Jewish temple, designed using the specifications from the vision in the book of Ezekiel, will be built in Jerusalem prior to the rise of the Antichrist. See Daniel 9, verses 24 to 25. I think this will be built by Orthodox Jews, but Zionist Christians will support the effort. The Antichrist will come out of the north meaning Asia Minor or Turkey, and as a political and military leader and a religious syncretist with an agenda of unifying nations and religions. Many Muslims will believe him to be their end times Islamic leader, the Mahdi, the 12th Imam. He'll help establish a peace treaty between Israel and its Muslim neighbors ushering in a period of increased global peace, but it won't last. 
the false prophet will be an imposter Islamic Jesus who will claim to not be God or to not have been crucified or resurrected. His goal will be to first convince Christians to stop believing in him as the biblical quote-unquote son of God, Jesus, and for all to submit to and worship the Antichrist person. All who refuse to worship the image of the Antichrist will be killed. See Revelation 13.15 Despite popular conspiracy theory rhetoric, the Bible teaches that it's the false prophet figure that requires people have the, quote, mark of the beast, end quote, on their right hand or forehead. See Revelation 13, verses 16 through 18. This identification, which is specifically connected to the ability of people to buy or sell goods, is received only through public allegiance to the Antichrist first. So lest we fear every new thing as the potential mark, it's not going to be vague. It will look like this. Deny Jesus as the Son of God and worship the Antichrist person, or be killed. And you won't be able to legally buy and sell goods if you don't worship the Antichrist by taking his mark. The total tribulation period will be five to seven years. The Antichrist will set up the abomination that causes desolation in the temple, and his true colors will come out. See Daniel 9 verses 26 to 27, and Daniel 11, verses 29 to 31. Wars, famines, pestilence, plagues, and increased global persecution will occur for 1,290 days, and then a final greater outpouring for 45 days, for a total of 1,335 days. See Daniel 12, verses 11 to 12. During this time, Jerusalem and Israel will be trampled on by the nations for 42 months. But two powerful prophets of God will preach the truth in Jerusalem. See Revelation 11, verses 2 through 3, verse 7, and Revelation 13, verse 5. During this, the seven seals and seven bowls of God's wrath described in Revelation chapters 6, 8, 9, and 11 will be poured out. I don't believe there will be a pre- or mid-tribulation rapture of the church. See my Prioritize Your Life series, specifically course number three, The Truth About the Rapture and the Tribulation, empoweredchristian.org, forward slash prioritize dash your dash life for my thoughts on this. If I'm wrong and we get raptured out first, hey, great. But whether you agree or disagree, the main takeaway is this. If pre or mid-tribulation rapture proponents are wrong, then the church will be here during all of this. So we'd better be ready. It's far better for us to be mentally and spiritually prepared to endure and witness during all of this than to be blindsided when we're forced to go through it. We must be prepared to endure. The tribulation is also our last and greatest opportunity to preach the true Christ and the gospel. The darkness during this time is going to get very, very dark. However, that just means that the light in us is going to shine that much brighter. Revelation 13.7 Then the beast was permitted to wage war against the saints and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation. And all who dwell on the earth will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written from the foundation of the world, in the book of life, belonging to the Lamb who was slain. 
He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is destined for captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to die by the sword, by the sword he must be killed. Here is a call for the perseverance and faith of the saints.